Hello everyone, Kay here on my homestead in Tennessee. I went big on onions this year. I had a tiny garden in California and I don't think I ever grew more than 10 single onions <laughs> the whole time I was there. So I wanted to see if I could really grow a lot of onions this year. One of my goals was to be able to sell the excess down by the road. That didn't happen. But I wanted to share with you my harvest, so stay tuned. If you know me well, you know I have a tendency to do everything on the late side. And if you're new to my channel, that's the reason my channel is called Late Bloomer, because I didn't start gardening until 11 years ago. So, I really wanted to go big with onions. I got them ordered on time. I got the recommendation from Tom Anderson, a permaculture gardener who came up and looked around my garden and gave me a lot of advice. He said, call them. They will send you onions per your zone, you know, and you let them know when you want to receive them and they make sure it's there on time. I ordered and I received my onions on February 22nd. But we had a lot of rainy weather. I couldn't get into the garden and get the ground prepared for three weeks. I actually didn't get them all planted for four weeks. And that's really as long as you can let those onion sets sit around before you get them planted. So I had that going against me to start with. And then, as soon as I got them planted, we had some gully washers, just some flash flooding, and I'd say a third of the onions just got washed out. I didn't even find them. <laughs> so that was that. So I had a lot of gaps in my onion, my five rows of onions, I had a lot of gaps. And that's where I planted all those cabbages. And so I grew onions and cabbages together, and you probably know that Deer don't like onions, and I planted marigolds, which supposedly deer don't like marigolds. So I had some protection for my cabbages between the marigolds and the onions, at least for deer and critters. That's no protection against moths that lay eggs that develop into caterpillars, which eat your cabbages. But things we're looking pretty good and we had a lot of uh, really, really hot weather and I had some watering issues, if you followed all of that, trying to get water down there and get them enough water. And onions like a lot of water, they also like fertilizer. So I think between those two things, they did not get off to a great start. And then we had all of that rain, just storm after storm after storm. And I finally pulled out the onions. I kept hoping they were going to get bigger, but I finally pulled out the onions the first week of July. Two of them were kind of mushy, so they went in the compost. And the two biggest onions I put in my roast beef <laughs> that I'm finishing up tonight. They were delicious. I only ordered candy onions because the other onions are just too strong for me and they don't digest well. So I planted a total of candy onions, white or yellow and red, as well as shallots. So I brought them inside and laid them out on towels in a room that was consistently between 73 and 75 degrees. And they can be cured a little warmer than that too, up to 80 or 85 degrees, I think you can cure them. But you want them undisturbed, you want to handle them like eggs because they can bruise easily before they develop that hard skin. So I laid them out in the sunroom because 
this room doesn't get any activity too much and uh, I laid them out on the coffee table and and then I laid out the shallots in the garage which stays a little hotter and and that did well but some of them I noticed were starting to sprout wanting to grow again so I thought let me get those cleaned up and get them ready for long-term storage Now these are fresh in here. They're not dried, so I'm going to use these first and hopefully keep these for long-term storage. This is what I love about shallots, is they grow in a clump. This one happens to have five in a clump. Now you've got some green growing out of a couple of these. Actually, more than a couple. So it's feasible that I could just take these that had some life that didn't completely dry up and replant them. are dry. Here's another one. Got three nice ones. But the green is growing and I'm going to try to replant these. really exciting to get a nice sized one. Now all of this dry material is going to be great in the compost. That's a nice one too. Got a few more in here. I'm just going to clean them up and then I'll show you my haul. So considering all of the effort and expense, you know, to just come away with slightly more than that, <laughs> I have a few that I'm going to replant right away because they're small. It's not a fail for me. I think it's a success. And I learned a lot about growing onions, which I didn't know much about at all. And I 
have plans to, to do a much better job next year and make sure that I'm not late. You always are dealing with the weather, so it depends on if you can get into the garden, if it's too muddy to plant, you know, and all of that. But hopefully the next, the next go around, I'll have all the kinks worked out and I'll have a lot more onions. Now, this is not going to get me through the winter <laughs> by any means, but what I decided to do is I was in Sprouts yesterday, and there's a Sprouts close to where my mother lives at her facility. I talked to one of the produce guys there, and he was saying they were having a hard time getting produce from California. They had been, and they, they had just gotten a bunch of organic sweet onions in. Now you can get Vidalia onions, which are grown in Georgia, but they're not organic. So you just have to weigh, do you want vegetables that have been sprayed um, or not? And of course, with the way things are going, with food shortages, uh, we're not gonna have the luxury to worry too much about that, I don't think. But while I was there yesterday, and while they had it in the store, I went ahead and grabbed four bags of, three bags of yellow, and one bag, one or two bags of red. And what I plan to do is dehydrate those. Now, if you'd like to see a video on that, please leave me a comment below. And once you rehydrate it, it's still gonna give as much flavor as it does naturally. I mean, I'd much rather bite into one of these fresh cooked onions with roast beef or chicken or you know roast vegetables roast with beets or yams sweet potatoes potatoes with rosemary oh just just a whole tray of that is like the easiest dish in the world and so good and you just want them to get cooked long enough so that they're soft all the way through and but still they have a little bit of a crunch and um, they're so delicious. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this real quick look at how I finished up my onion season. And believe me, if you are on your own, you can do it, but don't try to do as big as I tried to do because this is way too much for one person. And I knew that, I knew that, but I did it anyway. <laughs> but you live and learn. so. If you're interested in my journey here, uh, if it could be a, of inspiration to you, I hope you'll subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, scroll down and click all so you won't miss anything right here on the homestead. I'm Kay and I look forward to seeing you or you seeing me in the next video.